Welcome back and hello my name is Lynn Wilder and for the class today I'm going to be covering Y squares. Now Y squares is very versatile, it's a lot of fun and I'm going to go through the formula and you're going to learn the techniques on how to make Y squares any size you'd like. So here is an example of a Y square. Because these are so small it works much better with a smaller scale print. If you had a larger modern fabric here you would lose just too much of the design. Here's one example. Here's another example. To look like a pinwheel. It's very easy to make these. You're dealing with squares and no triangles were used to make these. Now we'll go over the formula. How do I make these Y squares any size I want? So the formula for the Y squares. We have piece A, piece B, and piece C. And you can see the piece C is smaller than both A and B. To do the formula, because this is the end result, this is what we want is a perfect Y square. We are going to take A and B. We want these to finish at three inches. This formula is an easy one. We are going to add an inch and a quarter to that three inches. Again, don't worry about the seam allowance. It's already calculated in. A and B are going to be three inches plus one and a quarter equals four and a quarter inches. Now we have PC. This is very easy. We just need to add 7 eighths of an inch to that PC. Now I'm going to show you how to assemble these. We are going to be using our quarter inch ruler again and we are going to mark on each side of the ruler. And we are going to make half square triangles. So we are going to have this. We do not want to trim at this point in time. We are going to have four half square triangles. Then we take that PC and if that PC does not fit on this half square triangle you cannot use it because it is the wrong size. Again we're going to mark, stitch directly on those lines. When I teach I would say the majority of the people their squares are too or their, their components are too small. If you tend to run small stitch just a hair on the inside of that line. To double check yourself that you're making these correctly, fold back the material and take a look at it. And then we end up, once we stitch, cut, we have four perfect Y squares. We have, as you can see, to turning one way and to turning another. When I make these, I like to make these eight at a time and let me show you why. Let me lay another set out. And this is also a wonderful example to show you how you can use these in any kind of sashing or border. Now that I have these are all going the same direction and these are going to go the same direction. Let's move these aside. What if you take these Y squares and play with them and arrange them? Wouldn't make that make a fabulous sashing and you saw how easy it was to do that by easily changing the sizes. But if I just used the four and did not make eight, I could not make this arrangement work the same way. It would be a little bit different. So if you make eight at a time, you have more play time that you can really create different things with your Y squares. So you can put them like this. And a design wall works perfectly for this and have a wonderful pinwheel. Let's turn them just a quarter of an inch. totally change the look of the design. Let's change them again. That looks like a buzz saw going around, doesn't it? Let's turn it one more time. And you really get that pinwheel effect. As you can see, the Y square is a very versatile component that you can use in sashing borders, make them larger and they would fit perfectly in a border or in a block. So in the next class, we'll be doing square in a square.